There is one thing I haven't shared too much publicly on social media or even on our podcast. And so I wanted to take some time to go over this today because I think it'd be a lot of fun. And what I'm referring to specifically is what our metabolic reset system actually is and how it started. Because I think a lot of people think of the metabolic reset system and think that it's a product or a program that was created last month or last year or even a few years ago. And that's just not the case. In fact, this has been something that has been in the development over the past 12 years. And I'm just really grateful for this program because it's helped so many women learn how to lose body fat in a healthy and sustainable way. And I hope that through this podcast or through our free Instagram resources and posts that you take you know some some tips or strategies from this system and apply to your own weight loss journey and see the effectiveness from this firsthand because it's truly, truly powerful. And I, I hope that more and more people can learn more about how to lose body fat and keep it off for life. And so what's really interesting is that the the seed of this program started uh, as I transitioned from Nebraska to Indiana in 2012. So 12 years ago, I, I graduated from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln with a master's degree in nutrition and exercise, and I just became licensed as a registered dietitian as well. So as you can imagine, I was really, really excited. I was super, super pumped up to start my career. I, I didn't really know what I was doing yet. All I knew with it, I, is that I was going to Indiana to start a business, a consulting business, and I didn't have a name for it yet. I just knew that I had a mentor over there, my uncle, uh, who is the owner of Brownsburg Fitness. And uh, he was my first mentor in, in creating the business now, what is called Tandem Nutrition. And what was really interesting was I still remember the very first few clients I had. Everything that I learned from four years of undergrad and two years of grad school was applied to the first 12-week program I curated. And I remember looking back and I had such a, like a big ego on, I mean, I thought I knew everything, right? I thought that I had all the answers and I thought I knew exactly what to do to help people lose fat for life. And boy, was I wrong. In fact, I remember telling myself one time that the key to sustainable fat loss is through, through the adoption and maintenance of healthy habits. And no matter what you did, as long as you maintain these healthy habits, after you lost the weight, you'll, you'll keep it off. And I, after a few years, and I'll, I'll tell the story here in a second, but after a few years, I realized that is not the case. Because I thought that if you just change up your habits in a healthy way, that you would end up losing this weight and, and keeping it off for life. And I remember the first few clients I had, maybe the first 50 to 75, the first you know few years of business, I, I, me I remember, and this is the time too, I was working as a wellness coordinator at a bank. So I wasn't full-time with Tandem yet. But I remember, you know, ladies who go throughout my program, it's a 12-week program. I think it was called like Tandem, like Tone Up program, something. And I remember, you know, they had a lot of success. They lost weight. The, the issue wasn't weight loss. The issue was absolutely after when they were done. In fact, I remember seeing some of my past clients on social media, you know, 12 years ago, and even then just approaching me and say, Hey, you know, I lost a lot of weight throughout your program, but you know, I actually gained some back. I'm not really sure what to do. And that really shocked me because I thought I had figured it out, but that told me that there was a lot more to figure out that I did. I wasn't aware of. And so that put me on this on this adventure of learning more about metabolism and hormones and understanding how things change. So things being metabolism and uh, physiology and and down regulation of systems that 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 causes weight regain after dieting. And so in 2015, I had the opportunity to work with a, a well known company. I consulted for them. I'm going to leave their name private for for just legal reasons, but essentially I was a consultant for them for a couple of years. And I remember I was working with their clients and they said, Hey man, after the diet, man, just go ahead and put them into maintenance. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. And so here I am, you know, working with my clients, they would go through a 12 week fat loss phase and I didn't know what to do. Right. I'm like, what do you do afterwards? How do you, how do you keep this weight off? And so I was really interested in this maintenance phase. And I thought this was the answer that, that, I needed to help people keep off weight for life. And so I remember I, I was working with a few of their clients and they lost, you know, 10, 15, 20 pounds in a 12 week fat loss phase. And then I put them in a maintenance, which means I would just increase their carbs by 30, 35 grams. And there was something really interesting that happened when I did that. 
And that was every time, literally every time I increased carbohydrates at the end of their diet, they all lost weight. And I'm like, yo, this is really cool. And then I learned why weight loss happens after you increase calories once you've lost the weight you did. And the reason is because dieting is really stressful on the body, especially if you're training, if you're doing weight training as well. And so that, that causes an accumulation, a buildup of stress. And one really unique thing about carbohydrates is that carbohydrates decrease stress levels. They decrease the hormone called cortisol. And whenever we increase calories, especially calories through carbohydrates, we see a drop in stress levels. And with a drop in stress levels, there's also a drop in cortisol and therefore water retention in the body. So when I realized that people would lose weight after eating more calories, I'm like, hey, that's really neat. So I took that to my practice and I started trying that out. And I realized that throughout the feedback, and so keep in mind, maintenance is a static phase. So maintenance is a static phase, meaning that your goal in maintenance is to maintain your current body weight. You maintain your current calorie intake and your macros. You don't change cardio. It's a very static phase. And, you know, I, after I did what I did, I, I saw changes in, in, in weight loss again. I'm like, cool. Like what's next? What do we do? And like, there was no other like, direction from the company, like the next steps. It was just stay there for six, eight weeks and then, you know, go back into the fat loss phase. But then I realized, hey, there's something really powerful here because two things happen. Weight loss dropped, hunger didn't change. I'm like, what would happen if we just 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 if we just keep increasing calories? And I remember that I I had a first few clients I started doing that with. And it was really amazing to see how their bodies responded after increasing 200 or 300 or you know 400 calories higher than their ending fat loss calorie goal. And in fact, what I saw was once we increased calories back up to their new maintenance, then, then we got back into fat loss phase. They lost a lot more weight and it was a lot easier and they weren't dotting from a very low calorie level and they weren't doing a lot of cardio either. And so I remember it took me two or three years to understand how to do this effectively because in, in the beginning, I was just throwing out calories after the diet. I did, had no method to my madness. I was like, hey, you get, uh, I was like, let's just increase by 200, by 150. I, I wasn't looking at data. And I remember a couple of clients were like, hey, I think I'm kind of regaining some weight too quickly. And so then I went back to the drawing board and I really dialed in on the data. And, and that's when the metabolic reset phase was born because I knew exactly by looking at data, by the way, if you're, if you're in a, on a weight loss journey right now, one of the, one of the most crucial points of information or data that you can be collecting throughout the week is your weight on a weekly average basis. Because as you know, weight will fluctuate up and down throughout the entire week. And number one, it will help you become less frustrated knowing that your weekly averages are hitting your weekly weight loss goal. And we can talk more about kind of what that is later, but, and also you can compare week to week and see if you're on track. And so what I realized is that having this data, looking at weekly weight loss averages, I was able, able to calculate exactly how many calories I had to increase by to get into maintenance and not above it. Because by that time I wasn't looking at data and I was just overshooting maintenance. It was causing fat gain. And so it's it's interesting because even today, not a lot of people understand the importance of maintenance, much less the metabolic reset phase. It's like the the metabolic reset phase is different than reverse dieting. It is, and if if that would interest you in, in learning those differences, let me know. I'd be happy to have a podcast episode on that itself. But this this whole trial and error is is how I found the importance of increasing calories. Because here's here's the thing, everyone who starts a fat loss phase, they don't just start a fat loss phase to lose fat, right? They want to keep it off. But from my experience, what I've learned is that sustainable fat loss happens at the end of a fat loss phase and not the beginning. And that's, that's where things were backwards from when I started in 2012. I thought at the beginning, if you just adopt these healthy habits and you just were consistent, you'd lose this, you'd lose this weight and you'd be good forever. But I was wrong. And here's why I was wrong. Because when you diet down, when you lose body fat, and when you decrease calories, that decreases your metabolism. And whenever you lose 10, 15, 20, 30 pounds, whatever it is with your goal weight, at your goal weight, your metabolism is the slowest it's ever been. 
And that's why so many women and men regain weight once they're done dieting because they don't know what to do. And, and that, and it's, it's unfortunate because I mean, our diet culture on social media, they don't talk about what to do after the diet. And I really think that our dieting culture incentivizes these fad diet companies and other companies that could be financially rewarded from this to have you keep regaining weight because when that happens, they'll get paid again. And like my goal is to have you never regain weight ever again. And it's not uncommon when it's done properly to increase your calories, 400 calories, 600 calories, even 800 calories above your ending fat loss calorie goal to make this a sustainable process without re- weight regain or rather we're staying within three pounds of your of the weight that you ended in your fat loss phase. And there's a couple of reasons why there's three pounds. For example, you're adding muscle mass, you're having more food in your gut, and you're holding on to more water because you're eating more carbs and sodium. And so fat does not happen when, when this is done properly. And in the past, so once I had a 12-week program, I remember I would just say, hey, here's, here's some directions of the metabolic reset phase, how you do it. And then what I learned was directions weren't enough. Like I would outline step-by-step what to do from what I learned. And I would give it to a client after they ended their two-week program and they would still regain weight. And so I learned that this is something that has to, has to be coached because it's a system that it took us four to five years to really master. And I realized that someone's not going to understand this through just one piece of paper. And, and then that's when we extended the phases of our metabolic reset system. So we went from the fat loss phase, phase one, that's between 12 and 16 weeks, maybe up to 20 weeks, depending on how much weight you want to lose. And the next phase after that was the metabolic reset phase. And so the key here is to stay in a metabolic reset phase at least half the time that you spend dieting. So if you spent 16 weeks, 16 weeks dieting, it's important to stay at, at least eight weeks in a metabolic reset phase. And the goal is to get to your new maintenance. So the maintenance energy goal or energy target is dynamic. So it changes as your weight changes. The second you start losing body fat, that's the second it changes. It changes with changes in metabolism and how much weight you lose along with how many calories that you reduce as well. And so after the metabolic reset phase, I realized, hey, we got to make sure that we're good and that we can maintain this higher calorie intake at our lower body weight without having to make any adjustments to our cardio. And then that's when we plugged in the maintenance phase. And this is a two week phase. It's, it's nothing that's complex. We just have to look at data to make sure nothing's changing, right? If nothing's changing, then we go into a four week intuitive eating phase. So here's the thing. I tell everyone this calorie tracking should not be a forever thing. It should not be something that you feel like you have to do forever because when dieting is done properly, you would get to your goal in a time efficient way and then get back intuitive, get back into intuitive eating. And one of the, one of the biggest mistakes I made early on was going from fat loss phase right into intuitive eating. That was terrible because your hunger hormones are high and you have no idea of like when you're full. And so you just eat until you're like stuffed, right? Like no doubt weight regain happened. And, and just, and just in case you don't know, intuitive eating is essentially eating based upon your hunger and satiety cues. And the cool thing about going throughout the metabolic reset phase, eating 300, 400, 600 more calories per day is that your cravings and your hunger, they go away. Like they, they are no longer present. And that's what makes the intuitive eating phase so effective because you can transition effectively cutting out, you know, cutting out tracking and not have to worry about whether or not you're going to regain weight because of hunger or cravings. And so there's two specific phases or strategies that I'll go over later regarding intuitive eating, but just know the metabolic reset phase is, is the second phase of the metabolic reset system. And then the third phase, so there's four total phases that we take our clients through. First is the fat loss phase, 12 to 16 weeks. The second phase is the metabolic reset phase. In this phase, the goal is to re-increase your calories, decrease cardio, which is going to re-increase your metabolism. Because remember, throughout the fat loss phase is when the metabolic rate declines. The only way to re-increase the metabolism is to re-increase calories, Okay. But it has to be done in a very strategic way because if if you if it's not done strategically and driven by data, then weight gain will absolutely occur. And and the worst thing that someone can do after they get done dieting and once they transition into 
a metabolic reset phase is to start dieting again right away. Because at that time, I've seen a lot of patterns of binging and restricting, binging and restricting, and it's not a healthy pattern to get into. And so the third phase is maintenance. It's it's two weeks. The goal of that is to reset your body set point. And then the last phase is intuitive eating. Again, the goal is to transition from fully tracking to fully not tracking. And this system has been like in full effect over the past two and a half years. Again, it probably took us nine nine or 10 years to really understand how to put all the pieces of this puzzle together to make it effective. And, and the whole goal of the metabolic reset system is so that once we have someone who's been struggling with dieting, maybe their metabolism is adapted or it's very, very slow. By the end of this system, their metabolism has been not only reset, but they're now understanding how to maintain their goal body weight after losing 20, 30 pounds while eating more calories and not having to track calories. And that's the beauty of the system is that once you get through the metabolic reset phase, you have all the tools you need and you know exactly how many calories you need, how many macros you need, how to make adjustments. That's another thing that people don't realize is that throughout the fat loss phase, just like the metabolic reset phase, adjustments to calories and steps and cardio have to be made because when you start to lose body fat, your, as I mentioned, your metabolism drops and Every time it drops, you're getting closer and closer to a weight loss plateau. And the only, the only way to overcome plateaus is to increase cardio and decrease calories. And those specific adjustments to carbs and fats and calories in specific, specific amounts is really important for consistent fat loss throughout a fat loss phase. And also, like I mentioned too, throughout the metabolic reset phase, there has to be very specific adjustments as well. So so yeah, that is called our metabolic reset system. And again, it's four phases that we take our client through to help them understand how to lose body fat in a healthy and sustainable way, resetting their metabolism and getting back, getting them back into intuitive eating so they can keep off the weight they lost for life. And if you found this interesting, if you want to learn more about like our system, or if you want our metabolic reset cheat sheet, you hit me up on Instagram or shoot me an email at Garrett at tandemnutrition.com. And if you're a listener to our podcast and you have not yet subscribed or left a, a review, please do so. I, I read every one of our reviews and it's super, super helpful to know what you're finding helpful. And it's also a huge incentive to me to keep doing these as well. I love educating people and this is something I really enjoy doing and your review and a subscription would be a huge blessing to me. So thank you for tuning in today's podcast episode. If you have any questions or anything, feel more than free to reach out to me. Again, you can find me on Instagram at Tandem Nutrition, as well as through email at Garrett at TandemNutrition.com. So it's G-A-R-R-E-T-T at TandemNutrition.com. So that's it for today's episode. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to speak with you again in our next Tandem Talk Show.